Hello and welcome, this time not to my studio, but to my office, because in this film, I am going to be interviewing my good friend and expert printmaker, Mara Cozzolino. So I've known Mara many years and she specializes in Japanese woodblock printing. And we're here to talk to her about a project, but Mara, welcome to, I, well, to your studio anyway, as you're there. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. It's nice to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Um, well, how are you today? I am good, thank you. And it's an absolute pleasure to, to have you here because um, I want very much to learn a bit more about how you work in your studio and also a project that you've been doing recently. So perhaps we could start with asking you when you came to printmaking and how your practice has developed. Oh, well, so uh, I actually made my first printer when I was in middle school. It was a very uh, rough sort of line of cut, printy things, but it was on those green plastic, tech, which is very terrible. And um, I really, really like it immediately, but then, you know, you, you do school stuff and stuff like that. And um, after after I graduated from high school, I started taking uh, uh, printmaking classes and it was mostly etching in Taglio and stuff like that. And I really loved it. I love the proce process for me, all printmaking pre pre processes as, as these great things that you can really focus not uh, on developing, uh, you know, images, and stuff like that but you when you're working on the print you can focus on something different it's almost like craft mm. and it's very good for my uh, way of working um but uh something like uh, 11 years ago we had a kind of a problem with our house that burned down and i had a very difficult year yes. and um after that i decided that i want to choose something more uh environmental friendly i didn't really want to uh using toxic uh, acids and uh, solvents all day in my practice and um actually i was in love with uh ukiyo-e and uh, japanese woodblock since a very long time but i didn't really know there were people using it uh, the sasakuanka mm. movement and the people uh, were using it in their daily practice still like to do modern words we should just say that sasaku hanga is creative print that is the idea of the printmaker like mara and i who design cut and print our own blocks so uh, Mara is based in Italy, and I'm, I'm sort of curious as to whether Japanese woodblock prints are very popular in Italy as they are in the UK. Is uh, well, actually, no, or I should say ukiyo is really popular. And uh, mm. so are, traditional um, Japanese woodblock yeah, prints. Yeah, the traditional sort of hokusai, the, you know, and, the ime, okusai, yeah. iroshige, that yeah. kind of prints, are, everybody knows about them. Mm. Maybe they don't know who is okusai or they don't can understand the difference between Hiroshige and Okuzai. Um, everybody has the big wave in their mind. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, um, but there are no, especially when I started, there were many people uh, who I know of working with Mokuanga and Sosakuanga. And uh, actually, when I learned, when I decided and I wanted to try and learn a technique, uh, I went to, I came to the U UK and had a oh, workshop so there. And, um, and it was lovely. And I immediately fell in love with the, all the aspects. The food is warm and the use of water and the lovely paper. And everything is really uh, connect with what I like in to do every day and especially since I became a, um, a full-time artist and I, I I work every day I do some printing I do some carving it, it's nice to be able to work with something you really really enjoy mm. and you I don't have any more issue with you know using acids and stuff like that so it's it, better that... for my health and the planet's <laughs> health as well <laughs> So let me just ask you about, about your, your practice. So you have a studio. Now, am I right in thinking that this is open to the public? How does, how does your sort of working day work? How does that? 
So yes, you are perfectly right. My studio is in the um, old medieval part of the small town I live in, in northwest Italy, uh, kind of near Torino, Turin. Mm. And um, I started working at home. And as you perfectly know, and maybe now your followers know, Mokwanga is very portable. So you, you just need a table to start working and experimenting uh, of course after a while I had a very small part of my house that was uh, especially um, for my hard work uh, and it, start, it started to be very very full with stuff and there was a chance uh, six years ago some yeah it was six years ago in December um, to uh, rent this place which is a it used to be a barber shop all right. In the in the this small area of the the town I live in, uh, and is in the very small her, uh, old area, so the the walls are very thick, thick, and uh, is not the light is not could be a little bit better. It's not perfect, but I love this place. And since it was a barber shop, it has a window, and uh, actually the out behind the computer there is the the road and the, the car driving through and people passing uh, so is uh, i like to to have a to keep it open for people who want to you know uh, is interested to to know what i'm doing what i'm making uh, and there is always somebody who's oh i didn't know this thing for here what is mokuwanga was it mm. japanese bootcut and um i also have a kind of a tense for days like this when i rather not to be disturbed too much <laughs> but when i'm pre yeah. when i'm printing especially yeah, it's an interesting balance very focused. Though. it's an interesting balance to have that being open to the public but still being able to work because you have you have your studio space but you also have things like you have an etsy page and and you sell through that as mm. well and uh an exhibition so it Presumably, your interaction with the with the selling of your work is actually quite broadly spread. Oh well, yeah. The studio especially permits my. Uh, I notice I have recurrent clients, so mm. people buy a print, they they give it to someone, and they usually most of the time they come back to buy other presents or more small prints if they want mm. to uh, gift something. They they will come back and having a studio, having a place where they can actually come and browse the prints and take their time mm. um, is magnificent uh, because uh, you cannot really invite people to your house to do that. It's, it's difficult. A bit, always, it? it's, yeah. it's a bit awkward mm. and uh, you can do it with friends, but um, people just phone me and say, I do that. And they come if, if they want. It's amazing. And uh, and besides, the studio for me was like a goal um, because I wanted to teach workshop here, and uh, and it's a very it's a small place, but I can mm. fit. In non-COVID time, I can fit for students. At the moment, I'm mostly um, taking individual classes because I'd rather everybody is. Uh, I, again, the the, area, the space is not very mm. big, and I want people to be. Uh, relaxed it and not to have to think about it, not touching something that you stop somebody else's and stuff like that so teaching also a part of your practice and do you find um that that feeds into your creativity as well I mean I, as a teacher myself I often find that actually it's very inspirational and it kind of spurs me to go and try things and do well things. especially at the beginning it it was amazing because it was problem solving of problems I would not have if yeah because students make mistakes makes have inquiries you make something maybe I would ever thought about it uh, and you need to problem solve that mistakes and that problem not your own which are basically uh, mostly the same you know mm. and, and after a while you know how to fix your the paper is wet and maybe you're carving the wrong way and some somebody gets cheap um so at the beginning especially i learned so much uh but even now is is always inspiring me and mm. i found especially there are in the those very few moments in which i don't really maybe 
oh, maybe I'm not going to print too much these days. I, you know, I try to sketch and get the inspiration going, to trying to do other things. There is always the time when I do a workshop and there is that students, which is amazing. I say, oh, I really want to start carving myself. Mm. And so you got the carving each while, while you are teaching, which is really bad. Because <laughs> yeah, I know exactly how that feels. <laughs> No, that's excellent. So can we talk a little bit before we go on to the project that I want everyone to hear about? I just want to talk a little bit about um, the work that you produce that I know so well. And your practice is, to me, a lot to do with light and form, which is kind of the heart of Japanese woodblock anyway. So um, if you could just tell me a little bit about your sort of subject matter and what you normally work with. Well, you said very, you were spot on. Because <laughs> oh, I, I actually, <laughs> uh, so these actually are some of my more um, uh, day-to-day work mm. uh, lately. Uh, of, especially, I think the past five years, I've started developing these prints with very, um, intense indigo blues and mm. and lots of bokashi and uh, I do like also is everything I like I put in my prints I do love carving I love carving thing branches um, it's fun to me I try mm. to push myself further and further uh, I do like registration so I like I don't use many blocks but I uh, print layers over layers of, of, of the same um, the same block and I like to develop color it's a little bit more like painting like mm. to put lay well but you do that as well so you but know, well, well I think well. Mara with your work because you focus very much on these sort of skeletal tree branches because a lot of Mara's work is to do with tree forms and tree branches it's kind of um, a really powerful way of using the media and unless you're a printmaker it's hard to describe how tricky it is to build up that depth of color and to keep everything as crisp and as sensitive as you do it's a really really interesting I would hesitate to say problem to work with but but sort of puzzle to to have an outcome that is as successful as yours and Mara well Mara and I, I was just going to say, we did a, a residency together in Tokyo and watching Mara work is extraordinary because she builds multiple layers of blue and multiple layers of black and somehow the print is as fresh at the end as it is at the beginning, which is a, a really sort of masterful way of working, I think. Yes. So, yeah, I, Thank I you for your lovely words. <laughs> Well, um, I do like to try uh, everything sort of like a uh, challenge at the beginning. Mm. So the starting carving the branches was like, could I do that? Can mm. I, would I be able to do that? And after the printing, uh, all the small stars need to be perfectly registered. That's the same as well. It was uh, sometimes it is like, oh, I wonder if I would be able to do something like that. And he tried to do it. And maybe you like it. And you continue the, on mm. that road. And sometimes it's just, oh, yeah, this was fun, but it was not exactly what I want to continue on. And um, these, uh, these projects for me, I love those prints and people mm. love them. And, uh, and now I think I'm getting better and better all the time. So mm. I look at my first print and I say, oh, that's a bit clumsy. I'm doing <laughs> much better now. I know exactly mm. how the paper needs to be done for the kind of effect I want mm. to achieve. And what I usually do, uh, I dump the paper a little bit more for printing the, the blue, the, um, the, the background. And then I let it dry completely because I want, I, I use a lot of layers, as I said, I, lose a, I use a lot of ink and I want the ink to set completely. And so then I dump the paper again and I mm. print the black and again, it's gonna be, I use this very rich and thick sumi paste, uh, which is lovely, but it is a bit tricky to print it. So I like to have the paper a little bit more dry, mm. still damp, but not so wet. Mm. And um, you need to be careful because it gets blotchy uh, mm. very, very easily. So 
it is there is a challenging part of the of course, of w- course. which is really really fun for me is but this kind of this actually very neatly brings us on to your project because uh, Mara has been Indeed. creating a project called uh, and I'm going to try and pronounce Momento. Have I got the, the right? You will say it nicer, more nicely than I can. Uh, um, but this is this is actually pushing you beyond even the, the the sort of challenges of printing and registering and carving because in this you have made your own ink so um perhaps we should start at the very beginning with with talking you mentioned sumi ink and before we go into the project and how you started um can you just tell us a tiny bit about sumi ink and the role it plays in japanese woodblock because that's going to be really relevant oh well um I hope I'm gonna. I'm not gonna make a fool of myself. <laughs> That's why uh, I asked you to explain it. <laughs> I'm passing the buck so, to you, Mara. <laughs> thank you, Laura. So Sumi is this amazing product from Japan, which is basically uh, made from soot and uh, a glue. And usually the glue is Mikawa, which is a glue made for uh, bone uh, rabbit bones. I think, and you can uh, you can collect the suit in different way. One of the most um, uh, used, but also the most uh, exquisite uh, and uh, expensive, and uh, you collect the suit from small um, little uh, little plate mm. over a flame with a specific coil, which is all usually, uh, it, it's sort of like a candle, if you want to say, mm. but instead of being uh, wax is a oil. And um, you put a, a small um, plate, yeah, uh, yeah. like a, a tea plate, a teacup plate mm. over it. And of course uh, the plate gets black and all the suit get collected there. And then you scrape it away. And you do that for, a very long time there is a lot of turning the small plate and mm. uh, change them and it is a lot more complicated than i'm saying it and then you mix this well you you grind the suit which is already very fine because it's a mostly a powder mm. and then you mix it with this glue it is always like a paste it's very mm. it is very malleable you need to um needed a lot it's very difficult uh, you need to be very strong there is a there are some video on the internet that they actually use their yeah, feet yeah i'll see if i can this nhk did a really nice one i think it, so it i'll is. see if i can find that one uh, and then you mold it in these very lovely sticks and you let it dry for a couple of months at least and uh, before it, that, then you have this very small uh, lovely tablet which is really light and uh, very very hard and it's not exactly like a watercolor um, pan so you need to grind it with a special stone before using it and um, you get a different uh, depending on you of course you grind it with water and you mix it and you can use it straight away for mm. for painting and um dependence on how difficult it is to make is can be very expensive or there are a little bit less expensive mm. and most of us know the sleek look liquid sumi which is yeah. kind of easy to find and usually that one is made for um again depending on what you are buying uh it make for the when the, the small table is not easy to to grind yet you can put the, all those in um a kind of in water and release most of the glue mm. and then you can grind it and, and make it liquid and it's like ready to use mm. and what i usually like to do is a paste which is a bit thick thicker than than the liquid but i can all uh, uh, i can buy it only in japan so yeah i think we've both got a bottle of the same one that we bought together yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, absolutely so yeah. this black I'll... sorry you go no no sorry i also have a jar uh, which mm. Thick, even thicker but I do like the boxer better we got better and it's finishing <laughs> now yeah I I think that uh so Sumi um for those of you who really think of Japanese woodblock in terms of the traditional prints you will see it in the black outlines of the print and in blocks of solid black color so it does play a strong role 
in Japanese woodblock. But if we now move on to the important thing, which is your project that you've been working on. So Momento, um, which you'll provide us with a translation in a moment. Tell me how all this started. So, well, yeah, um, is memento in Latin is a word who means, it means remember or remembering. And, and um, it started last summer. Well, it actually started four years ago when we had one of the most horrible wildfire in the mountains very near where I live. Mm. Um, and it went on for weeks and it burned a, a huge portion of, of a mountain. Uh, and um, it w we were used to have a wildfire during, right. usually they're during autumn and winter not so much because it used to be snowy, but now there is not snowy. Um, and for example, now we haven't had any rain for almost two months, which is really? very, very bad. Yeah. Uh, so the so climate is dry. changing in front of you, basically. Yeah, you can see it. I mean, everything. I remember when I was, I always lived here and it is the time, the, the, uh, the weather, the, the temperature is so different. We are used to, especially probably uh, you're in the UK, you're used to think that, oh, Italy is nice and warm, but I mm. live uh, just at the foot of the Alps, so it's not. It, you, it wasn't so nice and warm all the time, especially winter. We had very snowy winter. And now it's been a couple of, well, a couple of decades that there's not much snow, actually. And um, on 2017, we had this huge wildfire and uh, it went on for uh, almost two weeks. And I could, I could, we couldn't actually see the, the sun and the sky in the, the place I live in. And it was, they could uh, sneak, uh, mm. smell the, the, the smoke from, even from Torino, from Turin, very far away. Um, so I, I have been back to this part of the mountains in the past years, now and then. Uh, but last June, I, I, we came back to, to um, forage some wild fly, flowers and stuff like that and I don't know if it was a, a, a different time of the year so there was these beautiful flowers everywhere and then there was this very beautiful but immensely tragic and sad branches and uh, trees completely dead and charred uh, mm. I mean I have some bark here to, to show you it's mm. very very um, well, actually, I can show you a yes, photo, too. maybe, in the catalogue I made so the these project. Hard, these, these are hardwood trees? Was taken, this oh, was wow. taken soon yeah. after, and I don't know if I'm up there. Mm. And um, it's, it's like acres and acres of burnt trees. Uh, and uh, I was... I, I came back there and I couldn't do anything. I stopped, I stopped, I started drawing one of particularly, it was very broken. It, it, it became the second three, the mm. second prints. And, um, and then I came back and I, I was so sad. I was just, it doesn't, this small drawing is not really making justice to yeah. these three. So I decided to make some prints and I decided I want, to make a series, like a series of portraits. So they are all thought of as portrait of a particular tree that mm. I felt was more tragic than the other, or maybe it was just, you know, as ni was nicer looking. Mm. I, and um, I decided immediately that I wanted uh, the prints to be black and white because mm. It, they have to be black and white. I mean, mm. you can almost still smell the smoke when when you when you go there. Yeah. And um, I collected the, the, that first day. I collected some bark. I have a little bit yes, here. Yes, it was the, the bark, very yes. first piece I collected. Oh right. And yeah. um, every all so the completely are charred out. Yeah, yeah, it's it's completely charred. Actually, I just. Yeah. by touching it I just my finger went completely black and that's when I came I thought well I could maybe try and make ink from this bar interesting yeah. use it for something mm -hmm. um so I came back and I tried to collect some more and I make some more photos to I wanted the prints to be 
uh, I started with 10, then I settled on 20 because I wanted mm -hmm. small prints, but a kind of a choral uh, yeah. work. And um, and so I made some. I tried making some experiment, and uh, uh, the inspiration would sue me. But in the end, I just I use a recipe from watercolors. So, so I know, yeah, I know that people listening are going to be fascinated by the aspect of making the ink. So could you just talk us through sort of step by step how you did this? How you went from that piece of charred bark to a usable pigment to print with? So you can, this is really, really flaky already, mm. and you can just, it, it gets, yeah, really, it, there is a, a very thin layer of charred marks. So I use um, kind of like uh, something like, um, oh, and, yes, and a I was using um, uh, paper glass, but then uh, I decided that this was a little bit better. So I scraped the a very first layer because underneath, there is again, there is a lovely um, brown, the color underneath, mm. but I wanted the black part yeah, of it. Sure. So I scraped just the thin layer, mm. which is a very messy job. So luckily I, I started doing it in my studio and then my husband said, you should really do that outside. <laughs> he was right because it's really yes. messy. <laughs> yeah. I see that. And I collected a lot of this powder and uh, I have some to show you here. Sorry, I I thought it was closer. So I put it very in a coffee. That's, yeah, that's very yeah, Italian to put it in I, a coffee. I know. Excellent. It's yeah. so Italian of me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, oh, wow. you get something that's... like that. I don't know if you can see it. Very yeah, well. so, it's so it looks pretty much like a powder pigment at that stage. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, I ground it again with a coffee maker which is very Italian, but uh, I started with a pestle and mortar. I had a yeah. very uh, small one, which is lovely and nice, but I couldn't get it as fine right. as I wanted. So it was very heavy work and it wasn't really successful. So I went to the coffee grinder. I have a very, I don't know if you have this sort of, if you yeah. use them in yeah, your day-to-day -day life. But yeah. it's I've used that for uh, grinding up, for making size. I've used that to grind up the granules of um, rabbit's Oh, the alum. Yeah, I actually do it as well. Now yeah. this is just I, I did a the, whole batch, the... and then I found out that I had had turmeric in the coffee grinder, so that was all yellow. Oh. <laughs> So, because I used to, I use a coffee grinder to grind spices, and I got a bit confused, and I used the wrong one, so I ended up with the yellows. Yeah. Anyway, that story aside. Well, yeah, I, I have one that yeah. I used for coffee, and I, I, I used it for alum as well, and then I thought, mm, no, I need a very, you know, the dedicated one. It's going to be just, yeah, a dedicated one. And uh, and then I basically mix it with regenerated gum arabic, arabic gum, which All is all right. Yeah. Easy. Mm. And uh, I grind it with, you regenerate the rabbit gum with water. So it gets mm. gluey and, and lovely. You can also actually buy it liquidy, mm. Mm. but um, it's, I've, I mean. It's I've been mixing it up to do mocolito with, and mm. that I mix it up at, uh, I think it's one part gum to two parts water. Yeah, there is, there, yeah, there are which lots of recipes. makes quite a nice, yeah, there are lots of recipes out there available. Yeah, and you leave, I mean, you leave it for a couple, I think a couple of hours is already mm. better, but I left it mm. for, for an afternoon, it was, it, yeah. it was great. Uh, and then I mix it, basically it was uh, the, the, the suit, the, the gum, Arabic gum, and I used a little bit of honey, mm. kacha honey, mm. which is very clear, it's very 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 white and mm. um it that helps i i do i did a, a lot of research and there are a lot of uh, uh people using only watercolor mm. making what only watercolor and i found the only oh, so they say help with the fluidity and um, possibly help with mold avoiding oh because of its antibacterial yeah properties yeah, yeah. Uh, well actually my ink hasn't developed any mold and I have a little bit here now to show you for later, and mm. um, it's still and does nice it smell and nice? Because I know that it's that, still yeah, gum well, arabic smells pretty awful when it goes off, doesn't it? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It yeah. still smells nice. It's mm. not like 
when you, I, um, I used to try to do that with Sumi regenerating the, mm. um, the, the small tables, but when the water goes bad, it smells like awful. Yeah. And you can't see <laughs> the mold actually on it. Uh, so far, it's good. So good. And um, I put everything on a glass. You can also use a marble. Um, mm. Uh, you you want to be to be a, a little bit large piece, a, a large piece, and then I grind it with this lovely glass Ooh, thingy, is which is a uh, is so a is mullet, not, is it? Uh, yeah, all oh, right, yeah. Like yeah. I think because um, I have a glass baron, but it's it's polished to take prints with. Not to grind. No, this is a special. This is a rough year, and mm. is 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 for pigments, for oil pigments and stuff mm. like that. I mean, a bigger one would be probably a quicker work, but um, <laughs> this was what I could get hold on quickly. And you have to mull it for a very long time. I mean, mm. it, so you do circular motion and you just grind it on the, on the glass and um, you check it constantly. But uh, uh, I found out I, I needed at least one hour to have the the pigment as dissolve as possible mm -hmm. and i made some have some you know different oh, um, right. yeah. different tests mm -hmm. and uh, lo more glue less glue and um mm -hmm. 45 i time myself which was very boring but uh, <laughs> <laughs> i think but in the end, I found out that uh, um, I could, I have this very um, rich black, which yeah. I really love. Yeah. And also, so. it's, it's not really blackish. Uh, mm. The gray part is a little mm. bit warm, which, uh, which mm. actually I really like for this project. I probably yeah. would never use it for other prints mm. uh, because as, as a warm tone, which is, I think it goes very well with the the wildfire theme and the, the burning idea of the smoke I yeah mean, I, I think yeah no I can see that but I think also interesting to see all your testing I mean I think that for people uh maybe don't realize this is something that artists do is this endless testing and trials and trying things and uh, it never sort of seems to make it very much onto onto sort of mainstream. <laughs> I know that's why I I sort of use this nice yeah. block because I want it to be all mm. documented for once because usually I do all this you do all the trials yeah and stuff on like bits that. of and then paper all and, yeah. bits of paper here a bit there and then you put it together it's in a box and it's and then after a while you just oh I'm gonna throw it away because yeah. what I'm gonna do with that but I want this kind of be documented so I made mm. these kind of foshy things and there are all also for the prints at the beginning I, I decided to use three blocks but then I changed to two for each print because I uh, I like it more and so I kind of re try to register everything for one in my life and be <laughs> a little bit organized but um and uh, and also i made watches color sketches from which mm. point then the prints are uh, actually so did you do um, your sketches in situ did you go out to uh, a couple of them yes yeah. uh and then i mostly make photos mm. uh, because i wanted to to take my time i'm a bit slow uh mm. at, when I, at the sketching part I change it a lot and a lot yeah. and a lot, so especially focus, with these yeah. sort of prints, I make and remake the drawing multiple times. Mm. Um, so there were a few striking that was really, um, I, I had to go there and sketch yeah. there immediately. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, I went to the mountains four times. Mm. And the last time I also collected some water. I wanted to source, use my source water from. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so you're, you're using that as the base for your. Uh, yeah, for the, for, the, for the pigment. The yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's kind it's, of a little romantic thing. Yeah. It's not no, like that's, that. That's, I mean, it's really better nice. water than yeah. I, there, I can find here because mm. there is a bit of chlorine in my tap mm. water. So it's, it's better. Yeah, uh, sure. But I, I like the idea of having everything mm. from that part of the mountains that area is so when you came when you came to work with your um uh, project what's the wood you were using so to create your wood blocks for uh, i use sheena 
mm-hmm. and uh, which is I which work is with as well. Yeah, which is my favorite uh, mm. wood, and um, I had I still have a few six millimeters plywood, china plywood. We got in Japan together, I think, Ooh. and. Um, <laughs> And I got them cut at the size, and I want the prints to be smallish, and I decided for a 14 by 14. So I have a block here. Yes, and please, they're not please, very please. they are not very large. Yeah. And um, I use both sides mm. because one is really carved really, really shallowy for the, mm. the background, while the other is a bit of this is maybe it's a bit better. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's good. Bit, yeah, of course. That. Yeah, yeah. I like I like a clean block, mm. as as you know. I think, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I do I do enjoy carving, so I like my block to be kind of clean. Uh, but there is still. I see. Change. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I can see. And can I ask you about your registration, which is so precise? But you're not putting oh, yeah. the kento into the wood block itself as I would do you're doing it slightly of course yeah Yeah, um I when I um, when I learned Moku Wanga it was a very short workshop Mm. it was a two-day workshop so there was a lot to be taught a lot to be learned and um they didn't really taught us to uh, cutting cut cut Mm. kento corners instead we use a floating kento which is kind of a l-shaped piece of wood with the kento on that and um, it's nice. Well, I'm going to show you one. Yeah, it's show us. Yeah. Here, yeah. May I? I yeah, don't yeah. have it here. Sorry. <laughs> so, okay. This is one of my Kento corners. I have a few of them in different sizes and also different depth because yeah. I use the same depth. Ah, right. Okay. The, so that has to match the block you're working on. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a nice registration, is I mean, you can. It's, it can be like a one millimeter difference, but I think, it, it, I mean, if you want to be perfect, the same, yeah. same height is sure. crucial. And um, here are my Kento marks, which mm-hmm. in this case are uh, Kento corners from wood like. Oh, they're department. great. I those mean, stick on Kentos. I've, they're, I've they're talked about those things. on this channel before. And um, I'll put a link in for everybody to where you can buy those. So I love them. They are yeah. great. I have to I have to say on the corner Kento, I usually use two of them. One stick on top of each other because I use a, a little bit of thick paper. Uh, so I want to be uh, very happy. And uh, But you can also carve the... Mm your Kento mark in here instead of using the sticky one. The nice thing with the sticky one, you can move them. Yeah. And so you can have, for in, with this piece of, um, of, uh, of paper, you can have different sizes for different, and, and it's nice. Um, I mean, it's a bit tricky if you want to do a large, a large edition because what you do, you ink the block, you put the ink, you uh, shred it with the brushes, then you put, fix this here, put the paper on, take this away. So there is the, all mm. this, put it there and taking away that you don't have with your Kento corner mm. card in the block. Mm. But I don't, I, I usually don't do large edition. I mm. mean, if they are very large, usually there are 50, mm. uh, usually I'm more on the 20, 30, Mm. 10 if for large prints so for me it's really nice and convenient i do yeah I do like this it way. works well that's that's fantastic and yeah it's a bit tricky because you have this you need to be very careful not to move mm. your canto before of course yeah. layering the paper on yeah. on it yeah so so this project when you were working on it you said that you were going to work on 20 prints Mm -hmm. now behind you over your shoulder we can see this beautifully framed um collection of prints back here and um they are actually individual prints aren't they these these smaller smaller yes so what i did i made 20 prints Mm. and they are individual ones Mm. and um i have them here they're smallish 18 by 18 and uh, these are my least favorite, of course, but <laughs> we're gonna go to the, the nice one. And, um, but also there, there is this Japanese technique, you know very well, of mounting 
prints on this is actually the first one i draw all oh, right okay so we're it's seeing one of, here. It's one of my favorites what looks to be this sort of detail in the background which is the wood grain isn't it it's not that you've yes. carved an image into that that's the wood grain. no i try to i try to i use a uh, mm. wire brush um, yeah. thank you wire brush yeah. to try to raise the grain as much as possible because i want i mean it is a kind of a simple there are just two um um two blocks so i want I wanted the wood to shine, and mm. uh, this one is one of particular I'm particularly oh, yes, pleased with because uh, it has a nice grain. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I cannot really take it straight. Yeah. Um, and uh, so these are in addition of twenty five, and uh, I also made a very small edition of five prints with all the single mm. prints trimmed down without the white mm. and. Uh, pasted on a large piece of washi uh, paper right. which is the same mm. washi i use for mm. the original print so um and this is a very small edition and uh, i i really really like it it's like a, you know is that there there is like a coral family portrait oh um, yes of but i also want i also wanted the prints to stay by themselves so i also made the the small one but also, and this is sort of good news to people who want to access this project, you made a book as well. So could we just have oh, a little yeah, talk yeah. about your book? Yeah, well, um, the idea of the book was um, I wanted to, for, as I said before, for once, I, I really care about this project mm. and I really wanted to record everything mm. about it. So uh, the first visit there, the photo of the, the of the area and um, and all the um, all the passages to make the ink uh, and of course all the prints. So we made this uh, small book which is on printed on um, recycled paper. Oh nice. And it's yeah. called well, it's called Memento, which is the name of the project. And these are the coordinates uh, for where exactly I draw ah, right so you can actually pinpoint yeah. exactly what yeah if you go to google and you insert these uh mm. these numbers you you will know Fantastic. where the, the, the place I was exactly when I draw the first one and um I, I got a contribution this is a this is not beautiful photos of mine is from a fire worker that worked during mm. the uh, the fires he also wrote me a lovely introduction and uh, there was a bit of explanation of how all the passages oh fantastic I, so people can learn yeah. yes how you how you've made them i mean it's, it is not really like very very technical i didn't want to bore people and then we have all the prints it is, it's, I have a copy of this and I can vouch for the fact that it's a very beautiful book, very interesting, and, uh, beautiful book. And there is a little bit more mm. about the technique and the tool I like to use. And um, I think with Mokuhanga, especially since, uh, and is in Italian and in English. So one page is Italian, the other page is in English because. Um, for the rest of us. Little, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I have, um, Honestly, I have a lot of um, American and English customers. Yeah, I was going to say, I know you have a big and following so, in, the UK I mean, in America. Uh, it's really they helpful. deserve to yeah. know what's happening <laughs> if they want to. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and well, as well to the, this is the basically the thing uh, you see right. yesterday. Right. There and the blocks, all the blocks. Oh, fantastic. And uh, I don't know if, uh, if it's going to show very well, but you know, there is a, a little bit of a color. I mean, it's something I really, really like. It is. Uh, it's a and beautiful is a, book. And this is actually a, a spare wood block I had, which mm. I just ink and I printed. And I there was a beautiful, beautiful grain. And but you can see it in the print. So you cannot not very much see it in the mm. in the cover because also we didn't want to lose definition the of wording. Course. Uh, of but, course. Uh, yeah, it's very dear to me. Uh, I really like it. 
That's fantastic. So um, I obviously I'm going to put links into the description here for where people can find out about you, where they can buy this book. You have a web page devoted to this project, don't you? You've set up. Yeah. Yes. I wanted it to be not in the same place as the other. Mm. I want it to be like um, it's not at the moment is not uh, this project is not really in galleries. So mm -hmm. it's like uh, uh, I choose a big Carter web website, just mm -hmm. just the prints and just the, the book, and um, it's a sort of a wholesale price. I wanted to, mm -hmm. to 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 be as accessible as mm -hmm. possible. Well, and, I I think um, people will be very interested in that as well. So um, I'm also going to put up a link for Mara's teaching if you would like to learn with her and the details of her other very beautiful uh prints in in more color um so i think that it's mara's work is extraordinary and i really suggest that um you explore them further and i really hope mara and i are going to get together again soon because oh, i think we oh should do gosh. something together i think that would be such fun that would be me wonderful. too is just Oh, damn COVID. I, yeah. I'm waiting for you and the fabulous, the talented Miss B to come and visit me. We, and, we are uh, very keen I want to come. <laughs> and I want, I, I want to come there and visit you. Yeah, we, absolutely. Uh, oh. Hopefully. Uh, maybe in spring. I don't know. We'll that see. would be so good. Yeah. That would be so it good. Would, well, Mara, would. thank you so much for a lovely interview. And um, we look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you, Laura. You're great. You're amazing. And um, I'm sorry about my terrible Italian accent. I hope people no, no, we like that. Too we easily. Really, really like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.